the game I've been waiting years for, the grand finale to one of my favourite video game franchises of all time, is finally out. However, after a somewhat troubled release, and that's probably an understatement, I was a little concerned about the game's ability to hold up to my expectations. Although most of the issues have been affecting PC users, to the point the game has even been removed from sale on Steam at the moment, I did encounter a major problem with my digital copy on PS4 right off the bat. The game downloads in two parts, a 16GB base game and then 42GB worth of application data. The initial 16GB lets you start to play the game while the other 42GB downloads in the background, but you'll essentially have a glorified demo as you'll only be able to get so far through the story and all side missions will be locked off until the 42GB monstrosity is done. Depending on your connection, this could take days, and if your ISP imposes any kind of data cap, be prepared to breach it with this one. Once you're actually in the game, it's apparent the title is taking full advantage of new technology. I haven't seen a game that's shown off the PS4 like this since Infamous Second Son. High quality texture maps, lots of little details, and character models that stand up to extreme zooms. Gotham itself looks stunningly beautiful, but suffers from a lack of identity. This is the largest map Rocksteady have given us, yet their signature character and attention to detail is nowhere to be found. Arkham Asylum gave us a small, claustrophobic map, which you would have to backtrack across during the course of the game. Each area was instantly recognisable, and had been packed with fun easter eggs. You got to know the Asylum intimately, and could probably tell me where a player is from any given screenshot of that game. There were set routes a player had to take to get from point A to point B, which allowed the developers to set up interesting encounters along the way. Here, there are a million ways to reach your goal. That ability to pre-plan and make the journey as involving as the events at the destination has been completely lost especially as you can now burn through the streets at high speeds in the Batmobile. Ah yes, we haven't talked about this yet. This is the first time you can use the Batmobile in the series. As mentioned, it's great for getting around the city quickly, even if it removes any sense of threat. Any thugs who approach the car will just get zapped, and normal bullets don't seem to so much as scratch it. That said, I can't deny it's extremely fun and liberating to drive, especially when you can catapult Batman from the cockpit and glide through the air on the car's momentum. You get an appreciation for just how well the Batmobile controls during Riddler's challenging and insanely fun races. The tank also has a battle mode. This is where the giant guns come into play. During fights, the Batmobile doesn't control like a normal car, instead controlling more like a human player character. You can move in any direction using the left analog stick, and R2 stops being accelerate and starts firing your cannons instead. These fights feel awkward and stiff at first, as the pace of the fights is so far removed from anything else in the series, but you genuinely get used to them after time. In battle mode, you can also fire a winch, which is used to pull down walls or help solve various puzzles. The developers did a decent job of making the Batmobile feel like an extension of Batman, another gadget on the utility belt, but there's an over-reliance on it. Look at this example here, where I need to use the car to blow up these sentry drones. It lacks the subtlety and finesse I'd typically associate with Batman. As the biggest new feature, it's admittedly easy to see it's the least polished gameplay element. Everything else feels very much as it did before. Battles and Predator challenges now include a new class of enemy, the Medic. The Medics have the ability to revive anyone you've already taken out, meaning you need to prioritise them. You'll also need to watch out for sentry guns and drones, both of which can be hacked. In Predator mode, you have new Fear Takedowns. Essentially, this is a move that allows you to take down three to five enemies at a time, depending on how much you've upgraded it. It has to be recharged by carrying out a single silent takedown, but it's very much a low-risk, high-reward, easy-to-refuel maneuver that breaks the tension of Predator rooms. Dual play was advertised as being one of the big new things for this game. I'm happy to report that the fights feel amazing. 
Switching between characters feels very natural, and the character you're not controlling seems to do a great job of keeping their enemies on the opposite side of the room so they don't screw up your combos by whacking the guy you were about to target. The downside is that these fights are restricted to certain preset scenarios. They're fairly infrequent and it would have been awesome to be able to call in Robin, Nightwing or another ally at will. This could have been controlled via a point system or some kind of expendable resource to prevent players from spamming it. Ultimately, it's a delicious taste of a horribly missed opportunity. This is a spoiler-free review, so all I'll say about the plot is that fans will enjoy it, there are some amazing twists, and I genuinely didn't see certain things coming. I'll be uploading a separate video about the story, so those who have finished the game can hear my thoughts. What I can say, without giving any spoilers away, is that the plot focuses very heavily on Scarecrow and the Arkham Knight. In the lead-up to the game's release, we were teased the deadly alliance between Harley Quinn, Penguin, and Two-Face, but Harley only gets a brief appearance that feels obligatory, and the other two are relegated to optional side quests. In summary, I had a hell of a lot of fun with this game. For some reason, the focus seems to be on brute force this time, and that shift in tone prevents it from being my favourite Arkham game. It's very apparent this game is made for the fans, as it assumes, in both plot and gameplay mechanics, that you're already familiar with the series. This would be an incredibly confusing jumping on point, and if you're not already a fan of the series, then I'm sorry, but this game isn't going to do anything to change your mind. If you are a fan of the series, though, you absolutely have to get this game. You're going to love every second of it. And if you've already finished the game, then please feel free to join me over on my plot video so that we can talk about the ins and outs of the revelations and exactly what went on.